Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a component that we can change the resistance of. So this component is called a thermistor, so we can change its resistance by changing its temperature. So our the circuit we've got here is the, a classic measuring resistance circuit. So we've got an ammeter that's in series with it, and we've got a voltmeter in parallel with it. So that's what this circuit is set up to do. And so to show you a quick circuit diagram, what this looks like. So this is our symbol for a thermistor down here. And we've got our ammeter and a voltmeter. If we look a little bit closer, we can see we've actually got a milliammeter here. So our currents are quite a lot smaller than they have been in previous videos. Um, so the currents are small, hence why we're down here on this setting here. Okay, so um, first thing we're going to do is actually um, take a reading at room temperature. So um, I actually did this before we get started because um, it doesn't involve most of the equipment, so we can do that. So at a temperature of 23 degrees, which is at lab temperature, we've got a potential difference of 5.88 volts and a current of 8 milliamps, giving us a resistance of 740 to two significant figures. So this is a reading I took before I, I started doing any anything else. So what we've got here is in this jug, I put water uh, that's come from a kettle. So this is at, um, I've given it the time to settle down. This is at 80 degrees Celsius currently. So normally we wouldn't have circuitry anywhere near water, but this is a special waterproof component. So I can actually stick that in there. And what we'll see is the current is going to start to creep up. Um, so you can see the current has gone up above what it was before. So we are plugged into the 100 milliamp setting. So we're going to be reading on the scale that goes up to 10. So 10 on this scale represents 100 milliamps. So at the moment, this is at 3 on the scale. So that's 30 milliamps at this point. So at a temperature of 80 degrees. So I'll record this in my table. So a temperature of 80 degrees, we've got a potential difference of 5.58, and we've got a current of 30 milliamps, which we can then calculate the resistance of. So we're going to do 5.58 divided by, I'm going to open brackets here because we need to do 30 divided by 1000, because remember the 30 is in milliamps, but, and we need this in brackets because we want to make sure that the calculator does this part first and then does 5.8 divided by it. So let's actually calculate that. So it's 186, but I'm going to round that to 190. And um, because our, see here, our current is only two sig figs, so my final answer should be two sig figs as well. Okay, so let's return to the experiment. So we could sit here and wait for the water to cool down, uh, but that's pretty boring and time consuming. So we're going to speed it up. And I'm just going to pour some uh, room temperature water in here. So that should uh, speed up our temperature drop. So let's put that in there. We'll give it a mix with the thermometer because we want the water to all be the same temperature and then the thermistor to be at that temperature as well. And then I'll let the thermometer settle down on a reading again and then I can uh, take some measurements. So our temperature getting down at eye level, that is 57 degrees. So 57 degrees, our current, uh, that is two on the top scale. So that's 20 milliamps. And then our potential difference is 5.79. So we've got a 5.79 potential difference, 20 milliamps of current. And I said that was 57 degrees in there. So that's what we've got in our table at the moment. Uh, let's do that calculation. So we're going to do 5.79 divided by... 20 divided by 1,000, that's all in brackets, so we get it done. Uh, we'll press this button. So again, I'm going to round this to two snippy figures, so I reckon that's 290. So I'm just going to stick one more set of cold water in here. We'll take one more measurement, and then we'll do some analysis. There we go. Give it a nice mix. Okay. And we'll let the thermometer settle on a temperature. So that, I reckon, has dropped to 49 degrees. So uh, let's actually add a little bit more cold water. 
get a bit closer to our room temperature. Give it a stir. All right, so that's dropped to 45 degrees, which I is a little bit nicer. It's a bit closer to 80 degrees as well, so we can see if there might be some sort of proportionality relationship. So our potential difference, you can see, is 5.77. Our current on here, that's, I reckon, at 1.3, so that's 13 milliamps on there. So then let's calculate our potential difference. So we're going to do 5.77, that's our potential difference. Divided by 13 divided by 1,000. As you can see, that is um, well, that will round to 440 uh, if we're giving it to two significant figures. So let's clear some of this stuff out of the way. I'll just let the water all cool down. Let's disconnect the circuit. We don't need a current going around it while we're doing the analysis part. So let's get into the numbers in here. Okay. So, looking at our results, um, there's a few trends we can start to notice. So you'll notice that the lowest temperature, we had the highest resistance, and that the resistance decreases with temperature. So it looks like the higher the temperature is, the lower the resistance is for our thermistor. So that's a, a general rule. So then we might ask ourselves, are they inversely proportional? Well, we're going to need to do a calculation to figure that out. And the calculation that we will do is if two things are inversely proportional, let's call them x and y, if we multiply them together, that should give us a constant. So in this experiment, we think resistance and temperature might be inversely proportional, so they should be equal to a constant if we multiply them. So let's put if inversely proportional. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually do those calculations. So I'm going to do it for each of the rows in, our, in my table. So row one, row two, row three, and row four. Uh, so all I'm going to do is multiply them together. So we're going to do 23 times 740. I missed the seven there. So that's about... Uh, that's quite sure I've shown working. So that's about 1700. Uh, if we're being precise, I should give units. So that's ohms centigrade. Then we're going to do 80 times 190, which is about 15,000 uh, ohm degrees Celsius. 57 times 290 gives us, if I round that to two sig figs, that's 1700 ohm celsius and then 45 times 440 so that would be 20,000 ohm degrees celsius so um i don't think that would class as a constant so we're ranging from 15,000 to 20,000 there um so i'm going to say not constant therefore not inversely proportional there so just because resistance decreases as temperature increases doesn't make them inversely proportional this would be our check that they are inversely proportional 